Thank you, Heather, the fearless leader of the Kennedy Library, and Maggie Williams, the Harvard Institute of Politics new director, and their staffs for their hard work in making President Kennedy's legacy accessible and extending it to the 21st century. I also want to thank Tom Putnam, the director of the Kennedy Library, for his hard work and for having us all here tonight. On behalf of my family, I want to thank you all for being here. I'm happy that Laura and Elliot Dudnick, the parents of Nina Dudnick, could be here tonight as are members of Savante Myrick's family. Can we give them a round of applause, please? <laughs> members of my family could not be here tonight, but in between a week home for Thanksgiving and next, and next month home for win winter recess, I'm very grateful for the time to myself. <laughs> I would also like to recognize and thank all the members of the New Frontier Network who join us here tonight. The New Frontier Network is a devoted community of young professionals who are engaged in the life of this institution. Finally, I want to thank my fellow members of the New Frontier Ward Committee who have taken the time to carefully sift through an impressive slate of candidates and choose this year's recipients. The Kennedy Library and the Institute of Politics carry President Kennedy's legacy forward. They allow us to have a relationship with a man that we never knew and to draw wisdom and inspiration from his example. They help us to remember the courage and energy that President Kennedy embodied, and they compel us to search for those same qualities in ourselves. Standing here as President Kennedy's grandson, I am grateful to feel that he is alive and at work in the form of these institutions. President Kennedy represented many things. He was a war hero. He was the first Catholic to be elected president. He fought for civil rights. He sent a man to the moon. He resolved a nuclear crisis peacefully, and he signed the first nuclear test ban treaty. He was funny and quick, and he was serious and pragmatic. But tonight we remember something else about him. He was young. This award celebrates his youth and the youthful energy and spirit that characterized President Kennedy throughout his life. He was proud to be part of a new generation and excited for to ask for its help in leading America forward toward a new frontier, an idea he outlined in his acceptance speech at the Democratic National Convention in 1960. I'm asking each of you he said during that speech, to be pioneers toward that new frontier. My call is to the young in heart, regardless of age, to the stout in spirit, regardless of party, and to all those who respond to the scriptural call, be strong and of a good courage, be afraid, and neither be dismayed. Throughout his presidency, my grandfather tried to get things started. He never claimed to have all the answers or that he alone could solve the problems. Instead, he summoned Americans to join him in taking the first step to begin the process and to welcome responsibility. And he recognized that young people were the most important to that task because they alone could continue the work that he started. The New Frontier Award reminds us that though my generation will inherit a complex and problematic world, these challenges are now our responsibility and we must summon the will and the strength to meet them. President Kennedy chose Rice University as the place to unveil America's new space program which ex expanded America's commitment to scientific and technological process. Progress. Speaking to the crowd of students, he said, this generation does not intend to founder in the backwash of the coming age of space. We mean to be a part of it. We mean to lead it. Nina Dudnick found a way to continue President Kennedy's work in bringing science and technology to universities around the world. In 2003, she began sending repaired and unused microscopes, test tubes, and other lab equipment overseas schools and universities around the world. Four years later, Seedlings Labs was born and has enabled those who could otherwise not afford vital equipment to contribute to scientific progress. Seedling Labs does not only provide equipment, it also provides scientific training and education to individuals from developing countries through an intensive 10-week training course, training fellowship program, excuse me, and their ambassador program, dubbed a Peace Corps for Scientists, allows scientists from the United States and Europe to share their skills abroad, conducting seminars and workshops in Seedling Labs partner universities. So far, Seedling Labs has provided more than $1.3 million in equipment and fellowship training programs to universities and research, student, research institutions in 17 countries as, and has enhanced the educational experience of more than 4,000 4, individuals in labs and other scientific settings around the globe. Their support has contributed to more important scientific gains ranging from a patent in neurobiology research to creating a diagnostic test for multi-drug resistant tuberculosis in Argentina. 
We see it as our job to unlock the innovation that is stuck in these labs by sharing these resources, Nina said. And it is now my pleasure to invite Nina Dudnick onto the stage to receive the 2014 John F. Kennedy New Frontier Award. Thank you so much. Um, I want to say thank you to the entire committee, to the leadership of the Institute of Politics and the Kennedy Library. This is not an honor that goes to just me, and this is not work that only I have done. There are a number of people here tonight and here in spirit tonight, the entire Seating Labs staff, our board of directors, advisors and friends and volunteers, and an enormous network of partners in academia and industry across the country and across the world now who are making this work possible. I'm incredibly honored to be the first person working in science to receive this award. And in giving this award for science, you are recognizing the incredible importance of science in the public sphere and its role in diplomacy and international cooperation. There are tens of thousands of scientists that we, who's on, on whose behalf we work every day around the world. Many of them have had and passed up opportunities to work in places like Boston, places where they could have pursued their careers with every resource imaginable at their disposal. But instead, they have committed to working in their home countries, to building the education systems of their home communities, training their next generation, and solving problems of health and nutrition, environment and energy for their home communities and for the world. Thank you so much for giving this award in honor of their public leadership. And thank you so much for helping me and helping Seeding Labs to support them in the work that we do every day. Thank you. The youngest man ever elected president, my grandfather once said the secret to politics is starting early. Savanti Myrick must have heard him. In January of 2012, at age 24, he became the youngest person and first person of color to serve as mayor of Ithaca, New York. Mayor Myrick's political ses success is only the latest chapter in a story that defies expectations. When he was a baby, Savanti's family spent weeks living in shelters. His mother, who raised her four children on her own, worked double shifts at low-paying jobs to put food on the table. Savante and his siblings pitched in, working after-school jobs in Irville in upstate New York. As a college student at Cornell, he worked to give back to the Ithaca community. Serving on the board of REACH, the Raising Education Attainment Challenge, Savante helped to tutor inner-city kids, and he later founded the Ithaca Youth Council. His passion for public service and his efforts to serve his community led him to run for the City Board of Aldermen as a junior in college. When he decided to run for mayor in 2012, Savanti knocked on some 35,000 doors and he raised an unprecedented $40,000 and ultimately won the election with 54% of the vote, a landslide victory in the four-way race. Since then, Mayor Myrick has begun the hard work of governance in Ithaca. He ushered in the lowest unemployment rate for any city in New York State. He helped his city become a living wage employer and has taken major steps to reform the city's police department. But he's also done the small things to make himself more accessible. For example, he made the mayor's parking sp space into a micro park where residents can come sit and share their concerns. My grandfather hoped that young Americans of the 1960s would answer his call to service. Mayor Myrick demonstrates that young Americans continue to answer that call today and I invite him to come on stage to accept the 2014 John F. Kennedy New Frontier Award. Thank you for those <clears throat> extremely kind words. Uh, and I want to thank the committee, uh, thank the library for all their generosity. And I want to thank uh, the Harvard Institute of Politics and, and tell you what it means to me, uh, a guy from Cornell, uh, 
to get this award. It means quite a lot because I actually, uh, when I was 17, I had a choice to make. I had to choose whether I was going to go to Cornell University or to Harvard. And I, I chose to go to Cornell because it was close to my home and my family who mean the world to me. It was a, a beautiful campus that I just fell in love with. And uh, I uh, did not get into Harvard University. <laughs> So I, cho I chose to go to Cornell, and that, that's why I'm here today. So this has a, a special significance. Uh, it, in all seriousness, I want to say that for um, a, a young man who didn't always have a lot and who came from a, a, a kind of a small place on the map, but a place that was full of love, the uh, example of the Kennedy family meant the world to me. And um, Jack, when you called me last month to tell me I was at a loss for words, uh, this kind of faith, the faith that my friends have put in me, the faith that my loved ones have put in me, the faith that my family puts in me every day and the support that they give me every day um, also moves me beyond words. And uh, the, um, I just want to thank you all so much for it. You have uh, changed my life. You all changed my life, and you made uh, all of this possible. And I'll tell you what, um, words of President Kennedy's that moved me the most is that uh, he said that as we express our gratitude, we must remember that the deepest show of appreciation is not in the speaking of words, but in the living by them. So I want to tell you, and I want to tell my friends, my family, um, the committee, and the, the Kennedy family, that I will do everything I can with whatever time I have. I will spend every minute of every day working to live up to the faith you've put in me. Um, I will try to repay the faith of a family who has been asked for more and has given more uh, for people like me and my family than anybody should ever be asked to. And uh, because of what you have given and what your family has given, I could tell you that this award is the highest honor of my life and that I'll cherish it every single day. So thank you very much. <laughs>